Before we get to this video, I wanna let you know, this is a, a new thing for us. We have on mybodyprotector.com, we have some new products. This is part of the journey for me. The journey is to educate, but also protect and help. One of the products is the uh, journal that we just made for post-operative care. A journal where you can, you can write down all the things that you feel and in the questions you have, so you have that in front of you. So when you go to see your doctor after surgery, you have something to look at. You have something to grade your pain, something to grade your nausea, something to write down the questions you have. So when you get to that post-op visit, specifically the first post-op visit, but any post-op visit, that you have a framework to discuss this with your doctor so you can have intelligent conversation about how you feel, how are you doing, and what to do next. Hope this helps. We're going on to the video, so please check out our um, website for the notebook. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to uh, part two of the disability talk on the Rotary Gov Expert. Um, we're gonna finish up on a few details about SSI. SSI actually is um, a, a governmental, uh, in the US anyway, a governmental program for disability, social security, disability. So in SSI, if you are injured and you can't go back to work, uh, what happens is you are gonna bring all your medical records, all your stuff, not just your injury, but also um, your other medical conditions. Let's say you have diabetes or you have heart attack in the past or a stroke, or whatever. Bring all that information, you bring that to a lawyer, lawyer gets it all prepared and then brings it to the judge. And the judge looks through all your medical records and decides if you are qualified for disability. Uh, I can say the key thing about disability is it really doesn't pay that much. So if you're betting on making $100,000 for the rest of your life in disability, this is not the way to do it because it won't work. I mean, you're gonna get enough to survive and I think that's about it. I think if this is truly what is true and what's real and that's all you have left, it's a good um, safety net. Beyond that, I think uh, lots of us have much more productive ways to um, perform uh, things in life or to be a part of society. Again, there's times when this is just the best you got. And if that's it, then you should certainly go to SSI, you should go to, get to a lawyer uh, and figure that out. It is not a doctor's decision. So lots of times people come to me and say, hey doc, I want disability, what do I do? Well. I can tell them what to do, but it actually has nothing to do with me. I can tell them, I can say all the things that are wrong with them, but it doesn't really matter because what has to happen is the, is the judge and lawyer get it all together and make that decision. So as much as I would like to make the decision, at least in this situation in the US, I can't. It's not my decision. Uh, we can help support the decision, but we can't make the decision. So that's SSI. And then I will go to, to motor vehicle accidents or, or um, those kind of things where it is a little bit different and I don't know all the ins and outs because I only know the part that the doctor plays. I don't know the part of the lawyer and all that kind of stuff. But let's say you get injured in an MVA and you have a lawyer because you got hurt and you call the 1-800 whatever it is because there's lots of big trucks or whatever. There's lots of lawyers out there on billboards and on TV saying, call me if you're hurt in a car wreck. So you call that person because that may be the right thing to do for you. You call that person and what happens is the process starts, but it starts a lot different than a process of workers comp or process in your backyard. And so what happens is unlike workers comp, which we'll talk about in a second because I have more experience with that, Unlike workers' comp, where you'll get paid a certain percentage of your of your uh, wages throughout the whole recovery process or most of the recovery process, lots of times in a situation where you get hurt uh, and you involve the lawyer, you don't get paid anything for a while. And again, I'm I want to make sure I, I have limited knowledge. I work with this all the time, but I don't know the ins and outs. But pretty much what happens is you will not get the short-term disability kind of thing. You're gonna get the maybe the long-term payout, and that may be good, maybe enough, but maybe not. In my experience, there's no real short-term gain. Uh, if you get hurt in, the, in a car accident and you can't work, then you don't get paid for that time. And you may have some sort of disability insurance, maybe you have short-term, maybe that works that way too. But in general, it is the long-term payout. 
right? And that's why the lawyer gets involved in it because they believe that you have a case. They believe they can make money for themselves as well as you. And so it's a long-term payout. Um, eventually it's, it's settled. Um, and the only other aspect of it for me is we may be called into a deposition. So what that means is we get in front of a court, but usually that's not the case. Usually we get in, get a, a video deposition, which I did this one last week, um, where we get together with the lawyer from the two sides, right? There's, there's a plaintiff and whatever that's called. The other thing, right? There's two sides of the story, right? One is for you and one is for the insurance company or whatever. And we talk and they ask me a, a bunch of questions and I try to give them the best answer I have. And then, and then we go into the end. And that's the, that's the deposition. The deposition then gets to uh, the court. And when there's the court, then my deposition, my video deposition goes to the, the jurors there as part of the case. And ultimately it becomes a, settle, a settlement, whether it's a settlement in court or settlement outside of court between the two lawyers. Uh, and then you get something for that, or you don't, or you don't get something. That is another way when we talk about disability, it's not really exactly disability, but it's a payment at the end for, for your loss, for what happened. Right. And so the in-between is workers comp, right? Workers comp is you get hurt in the job and then you come to see me and I fix whatever it is, probably your shoulder. Cause this is shoulder, uh, uh, YouTube channel. I fix your shoulder. And then while you're not working, you I think it's somewhere around 70% in Georgia, about 70% of your wages you get each week, which is not really great, but it's better than nothing. Lots of times, because it's 70% of your normal pay. So if you were doing overtime, that goes away too. So it's not really 70%. Lots of times, for lots of people, it's less than that. But anyway, so you get paid throughout the time, even if it takes one year, two years, so it's not a three months or six weeks. It's, it's a long time you get paid typically until we say you're at MMI, Maximal Medical Improvement. And then you have a PPD rating, a permanent partial disability. And this is where it gets really confusing to lots of people. So let's say you're a year and a half out from your shoulder surgery and you're not as good as you used to be, right? So you're at, you're as good as you are going to be, right? You're, let's say you've been, we, month after month after month, you're about 90% as good as you were before. But it doesn't change, it's 90%, 90%, 90%. And then all of a sudden we go, okay, I guess this is, you're at maximal medical improvement. You're not getting any better. You're not as good as you were before, but you're not, um, but you're not improving. So we say, this is the time to end this claim. And then you become permanent, partially disabled, which means you're not as good, as good as you were before, but you're, but it doesn't look like you're going to get there. So we give her a rating and there's a specific book we look through and say, okay, you're 10% as good as you were before the injury. And that PVD rating then ultimately goes into some calculation that I don't completely understand that actually brings a certain amount of financial benefit to you for your permanent partial disability. So you can have MMI, you can be maximal medical improvement and you can have a permanent partial disability, but you can actually still potentially go back to your normal job. And this is where it gets confusing because let's say your job requires you to be at 80% as good as you were before and you're 90% as good as you were before. So then that means you can actually go back into your regular job. Now, some people can do that. Some people can't do that. It depends on your job, right? If you, if you have to lift hundred pounds over your head and you can't do that, well, that's different. Then you're still at MMI and you still have a PVD rating, but you can't return to your normal work. Let's say you're a teacher and you slip and fall and you break your shoulder. And in the end, you're at MMI and your PPD rating is, is you're 90% as good as you were before, uh, which means you can't do this, but you can do this. So then you can still run the board. And so you are at MMI, you're at PPD, and you can return to work to your normal job. And that's how, why it's confusing because someone could be at MMI, not as good as they were before. They could get a PPD rating, right? And then it could still return to the normal job. But sometimes people can be at MMI. They're as good as they're gonna be. They can have a PPD rating that's 80%, but also means you can't go back to your normal job because that job requires to be 90%. So that's the kind of, the, the difficulty in this situation where you, um, you may get a rating 
And if you get a rating, you're gonna get financial outcome to you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can return to your normal job. And so it depends what your normal job is. And that's again, that's a that's a uh, episode we've already done about can I return to work? So I think that is the best way I can, I can um, summarize um, disability after surgery, because some will be able to go back to normal duty. Some will get comp- compensated through work discount. Some will. Some will be compensated through um, litigation, through whatever you got, motor vehicle accident, wasn't your fault, that kind of stuff. And some will. Some will just be, you got hurt in your backyard and you're not as good as you, you used to be, but there's no one who's gonna compensate you for that. So you have to decide, can I go back to work? Can I go back to what I did before? And that's a really hard question. It's a hard question for the patient, hard question for the doctor, but hopefully the doctor that's taking care of you and listening to you can help you navigate at least to some degree um, and to try and figure out what is the best thing for you. Because sometimes the best thing for you is to not go back to that job and find something else. Sometimes the best thing is actually to, to know that you're not as good as you used to be, but that job probably is still as good as you can get in your situation. So I hope this helps. If, if you have any questions, any thoughts, please include them underneath because this is a really complicated process and I try to break it down, but it's, I'm sure I didn't do uh, on a 100% job making sure it's clear. So any questions, please leave them in the comments, subscribe to this channel, and we'll continue to try to give us more, give you more and more information of how to navigate this crazy world that we live in. Thanks and have a good night.